going back to the sort of the TRT discussion and the testosterone discussion, these days there's a lot of discussion around, oh, you know, if your testosterone's too high, then, you know, it converts to estrogen and that creates these effects like, you know, gynecomastia, growth of the male breast tissue, mm -hmm. uh, reduction in libido, all these things. Most of those effects are not actually caused by estrogen. This is a common misconception. It's those effects are created by excessive levels of What's up guys, Derek from playtornadays.com. Today we are going to be revisiting the Joe Rogan, Andrew Huberman podcast episode because there is a lot more juicy shit to get into that we have not yet uh, dived balls deep into. Things about gynecomastia, people getting their goddamn titties cut open, fucking uh, androgens, performance enhancement in sport, deca burritos, shit like that. We're gonna dig into it all and uh, we're gonna go piece by piece. There's gonna be a lot of clips Probably, you know, at least uh, another three or four, potentially. There's a lot of good content in here. If you haven't watched the podcast, I recommend you watch it. It's, you know, a very insightful episode with a lot of random cool tidbits of information. Huberman, obviously a, you know, incredible educator and uh, content creator in his own right. And Rogan asking all the right questions to make it, you know, a very, very enthralling podcast. So we're going to be getting into gyno in this one and the impact of uh, prolactin versus estrogen. During development, the... Testes give off testosterone, no surprise there. But the actual masculinization of traits within the brain, and there are certain traits that anatomically you can see. The, By the way, I have this on 1.2 times speed right now. Masculinization of the brain is not by testosterone. It's by testosterone that's aromatized, converted into estrogen. So estrogen is actually what masculinizes the male brain. What? Absolutely. Wow. And th so uh, going back to the sort of the TRT discussion and the testosterone discussion, these days there's a lot of discussion around, oh, you know, if your testosterone's too high, then, you know, it converts to estrogen and that creates these effects like, you know, gynecomastia, growth of the male breast tissue, mm -hmm. uh, reduction in libido, all these things. Most of those effects are not actually caused by estrogen. This is a common misconception. It's those effects are created by excessive levels of prolactin. Mm. And the more common medical practice now is to not include estrogen blockers when people are doing testosterone replacement. No anastrozole, none of those things, because they actually have very bad effects on the vasculature of the brain. Is that clomiphene as well? Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with clomiphene. If it's an estrogen antagonist or, yeah. or an aromatase inhibitor, then you want estrogen. You don't want a ton of it, but for longevity of the brain and health of the brain and for repair of the brain, you need ample levels of estrogen. So, Okay, so a lot to uh, unpack there. Um, basically, the main thing he says that's of note is that high levels of prolactin are the cause of gyno, not high levels of estrogen. And the use of aromatase inhibitors like an astrazole has been, you know, basically done away with by people who are, you know, leading the charge in the medical community in the endocrinology field, I guess, of, uh, you know, safer practices for, you know, hormone replacement therapy and not um, unnecessarily inhibiting an enzyme that is otherwise responsible for causing neuroprotection, cardioprotection, a bunch of different functions in the body, critical for your health. However, the interesting thing about that is, well, a lot of the things he said are, you know, spot on as far as the estrogen, you know, neuroprotection, um, the vasculature, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. The only thing that kind of, I, you know, was kind of surprised at is the fact that he's so like gung-ho on this high prolactin being the cause of like so many things, like the dad bod caused by prolactin, gynecomastia caused by prolactin, all this shit caused by prolactin. It is not necessarily just prolactin in my opinion. Like there's definitely a role where um, testosterone seems to increase prolactin kind of in a dose dependent manner to some extent. I do think this is downstream to the aromatization process, which consequently is stimulatory of prolactin secretion. However, I don't necessarily think that prolactin is the root cause of the gynecomastia development when, you know, clinically we can actually see exactly what causes gyno from a hormonal aspect. Like this is a graphical representation of the stimulatory action on breast tissue that occurs to initiate and progress the breast development. Um, and it involves a coordinated effort of all of these different things. Now, obviously, you know, you could have more than more of one or the other and it's going to potentially push you over the border because at the end of the day all you really have to inhibit estrogen induced rna transcription at the receptor site or any kind of antagonistic activity is like androgen recept 
not androgen receptors, actual fucking free floating androgens in your body. And in addition to that, you have all of these different stimulatory inputs that can contribute to the issue. So you have estrogen, estradiol binding to estrogen receptors and causing agonism in the area, estrogen receptor ductal growth. We have growth hormone contributing to the circulating IGF-1. And this IGF-1 can be very problematic. And we see this in individuals, you know, using growth hormone, MK677, concurrently with their um, other hormonal interventions. Now, again, though, there's, you know, roles with prolactin with that too, and interplay with that shit and the effect it has on estrogen production. A lot of this stuff does have significant overlap. So kind of like owning in on one stimulatory input and blaming the whole thing on it is kind of short-sighted in my opinion, given the fact that also progestogenic signaling at the progesterone receptor also has stimulatory input. And then prolactin, of course, at the prolactin receptor also can be stimulatory. And all these things cumulatively can layer on top of each other. Some can be more problematic than others, but at the end of the day, it's not like estrogen is not contributing in any capacity whatsoever. Rather, it is a simultaneous coordination of all of these things or, you know, a majority of certain ones in certain circumstances. Like obviously if you're using something that's, you know, a very potent substrate for aromatase or using a fucking shit ton of exogenous GH or whatever the case is, you could have one vector be pushed a little bit more aggressively than the others and it can push you over the border and, you know, start to develop that breast tissue. But to disregard all of these other things and just say it's the prolactin, like that's why you have a dad bod, that's why you have gyno, you know, it's definitely not the case in my opinion. And when you actually look at case studies, you can see how this actually breaks down. So here we have gynecomastia in 786 adult men, clinical and biochemical findings. This was done at the andrological department in Copenhagen, Denmark during a four year period under the diagnosis of gynecomastia. So basically they tried to like root out the actual, well, I shouldn't have said root out. They, they're trying <laughs> to extrapolate out the root of the issue um, that caused all of these gyno cases essentially. And when you actually break it down, like some of them, like a lot of them are basically um, can't define what they are exactly because there's no definitive way to say for certain you can own in on, you know, some bio biomarker and see a significant aberration be like, oh, that's definitely it. The ones that they're like pretty fucking sure are the ones that are labeled accordingly, but then there's a lot of unspecified, undisclosed, you know, ambiguous ones. But anyways, like the table summarizes basically the main underlying causes of gyno. So we had misuse of anabolic steroids or cannabis was reported in 79 men, 76 with the anabolics, three with cannabis um, as the basic cause for their development of gynecomastia. Now, again, obviously, you know, the cannabis one, a little bit controversial, but that, you know, that's what they diagnosed it as. Anyways, in the remaining 511 men, testicular problems were the main cause for gynecomastia in 91 men, 17.8%, some degree of testosterone, um, deficiency was detected in 79 men, 15.4%, which again, goes back to the whole stimulatory input versus the inhibition component of androgens and the role they play kind of antagonizing each other's action in some capacity on breast tissue development. Um, like the main guys who are going to be prone to gyno are guys who are like hypogonadal as fuck. I don't know why I said as fuck. They're already hypogonadal. Six men were diagnosed with Klinefelter syndrome, 1.2%, and six with testicular tumors, 1.2%. Concomitant or recent use of medication known to be associated with the development of gynecomastia for various comorbidities was the second most frequent cause, 16.6%, .6 with 85 of them, whereas other reasons highlighted were all less frequent. Among the 511 men, the reason remained unexplained in 289 which is 57% of them, the palpable gynecomastia in these men were additionally confirmed by ultrasound examination in 65, 30% of these. So basically this is breaking down again, what they determined to be the root of the issue. And we can see specifically hyperprolactinemia 1%. So this is defined as, you know, super physiological prolactin levels. Is this the root of the issue for every single guy? You know, obviously not. Obviously there's a bunch of different issues and you know, you could probably argue that some of the shit downstream is going to lead to an imbalance where prolactin can then cause stimulatory input that is disproportionately favorable for breast tissue development relative to the androgen input, like in primary testosterone deficiency, mixed testosterone deficiency, secondary deficiency, some of these syndromes, shit like that. However, there is definitely a stimulatory component of these other hormonal systems that are being overlooked in this context. And again, this isn't an argument to not use or use aromatase inhibitors because I don't think they're good either, but to disregard estrogen as like, 
because that's not even really relevant to say, you know, the aromatase inhibitor thing. Like I think we both clearly are on the same page with, um, and I think all you guys already know that the aromatase inhibitor discussion is in a hormone replacement therapy context is essentially, um, you know, probably doing more harm than good for the majority of individuals. But anyways, you know, the prolactin thing, like I said, not the root of the issue, in my opinion, it is a contributing factor, but certainly is not the whole cause at the end of the day. So prolactin is what's causing that growth of breast tissue. Because I went down a rabbit hole the other day and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos of guys having their, their, um, what they call bitch tits, having them re removed. Yeah. yeah, and gynecomastia is, it's, it's, it's a mass. It's, it looks like it's fluid. And it's vascularized. I spent some yeah. time with cadavers. I teach in our anatomy and I, years ago we used to do, I would do the labs also, now I don't do the lab part. Um, you occasionally see this. As I have a colleague, he's a physician, he always says, you know, the male breast tissue, it's, it's one of those things that it's there, it's just not very interesting. Um, it just happens to be there and it's very small. Mm -hmm. But if there's a big increase in prolactin, then you will see that. People who take uh, opioids, like with the opioid crisis or heroin users, the reason why they get breast development is because dopamine inhibits prolactin. Mm. So dopamine and testosterone are close cousins. And this will, this will immediately be familiar to you or anyone else that has had that experience of really being in the zone and hard driving and you're, you're getting wins. Mm -hmm. And we know that testosterone goes up as you're succeeding. We know this. I, mm. I mean, I didn't do the blood serum analysis, but you can bet that the, in the Poirier-McGregor fight, if you did blood draws before, I don't know whose testosterone would be higher. It doesn't really matter. But afterward, you're going to see a significant decrease in the, in the loser. Mm. And you're going to see a significant increase in the winner. You see this in day traders. You see this in school teachers. This, day traders? Yeah, because really? testosterone feeds back on the brain and releases more dopamine because the brain is trying to learn what was the behavior that led to the win. Is this a similar uh, thing that happens with women when women succeed? Yeah, so women have some testosterone. Uh, they mostly make it from their adrenal glands, these little glands that ride atop the kidneys and the lower back. And at the core of the adrenals, they can release uh, these androgens. Occasionally, um, and just as a kind of a side note, occasionally a child is born with a female child is born with a very enlarged clitoris. There's um, oftentimes there, you'll find like a, uh, a tumor on the adrenals in the, in the pregnant mother. It's not mm. entirely. It will release more dopamine and testosterone will go up a little bit. And testosterone is responsible, a little um, increase in testosterone each month during the menstrual cycle is responsible for an increase in libido about 10 to 14 days before uh, ovulation that kicks in right around ovulation for the purpose of trying to fertilize the egg. Okay, so anyway, I think that's basically it for the gynecomastia component. And like at the end of the day, why do CIRMs, why are they so effective at attenuating gynecomastia development? They have selective receptor modulation of the estrogen receptor specifically they don't actually lower estrogen levels so if there was some sort of like even if you were to implicate estrogen in the effect on prolactin which subsequent to that is causing gyno and you you know make an argument for the fact that well the prolactin is still the issue and it's just the estrogen making the prolactin be the issue like when you use things like novodex raloxifene these are literally selectively binding to estrogen receptors and modulating them accordingly based on the pharmacology of the drug they are leaving your serum estrogen levels intact. There is no, like, fuck you, they could potentially even increase due to the inhibition of negative feedback with the case of like Novodex, for example. This kind of thing is going to lead to increases in serum estrogen levels, which again, if there was some stimulatory action on prolactin would even exacerbate the prolactin even worse, which would then make the gynecomastia worse. So a CIRM, why are CIRMs working to attenuate gyno development is because they're inhibiting estrogen induced action at the receptor site, like the downstream consequence of this estrogen being increased, if CIRMs were totally ineffective and it only had to do prolactin, the estrogen increase from using a CIRM and binding up those receptors, subsequently freeing more estrogen into circulation, preventing negative feedback with the hypothalamus too, subsequently increasing testosterone production and downstream aromatizing into even more estrogen would have an even more stimulating consequence on prolactin, which would then cause even more gyno development. You would not have an attenuation of gyno through CIRM deployment. Rather, you would have an exacerbation of it, making the gyno even worse. So no, it's not just prolactin. It's all of these different things layered on top of one another. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed it. More clips to come. This is a really, really um enthralling podcast like i said and i'm looking forward to uh digging into some more of it with you guys so like subscribe if you want to uh you know stay tuned um obviously uh again check out huberman he's a great resource for a lot of things from a neuroscience perspective and you know a bunch of other you know very interesting tidbits that you will never tease out of literature yourself because like frankly who has the time to dig through all this shit you always want to have as many high quality resources of information as you can in order to cumulatively build up your education 
in as broad spectrum of a way as possible. It's impossible for everyone to be an expert in fucking everything. So when you learn from the best, you know, it helps you, you know, become more well-rounded and it's always good to be open to uh, um, learning from others. So obviously, and he's entertaining too. So check out his shit. And um, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow my Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, not bitch you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. I'll tell medicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality oversight from doctors who actually know how to interpret biomarkers and you know stuff like this, how to attenuate gynecomastia, even looking at novel preparations of medications with different pharmacokinetic profiles like topical raloxifene, Novidex, stuff that is very promising in the industry, but no one is talking about because no one even understands how the fuck it works. And that's not a you know talking shit necessarily. Like this is very new, like uncharted waters and stuff that uh, we're at the cutting edge of. So if you want high quality oversight from people who actually know, you know, are at the top of their game when it comes to this stuff in particular. Check it out. It is in the video description below um, as well. Even if you're natural, like this has nothing to do with, you know, if you're enhanced, like come and check us out. Like, you know, we handle HRT, we handle, you know, thyroid issues, we handle autoimmune stuff. But at the end of the day, we are a turnkey facility for people who want to optimize their health and or just check what's under the hood and understand what's going on. So even if you're natural, you can get high quality oversight and interpretation of your um, health status. So anyways, video description below, anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.